Good evening. It's Saturday, the 18th of July. You're tuned in to our 6 p.m. newscast coming to you from Alidang's News Centre in Seoul. It's very good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this evening, 13 days have now passed since Korea reported its last case of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, otherwise known as MERS. The health ministry says the number of confirmed cases remains at 186, as it has now for nearly two weeks. No MERS-related deaths have been reported over the last week either. The death toll during the outbreak is 36. Of the confirmed cases, 135 people have made complete recoveries. The number of patients still receiving hospital treatment for MERS is now just 15, one five. Fewer than 100 people are under quarantine. Just to give you an idea of how far that figure has fallen, it was well over 6,500 in mid-June. South Korea and France have vowed to work harder to resolve the North Korean nuclear issue in light of the historic nuclear deal between Iran and the world's major powers. In a statement following Foreign Minister Yoon byung sees meeting with his French counterpart Laurent Fabius in Paris, Seoul's foreign ministry said the two diplomats saw eye to eye on the need for a fresh global push to get Pyongyang to abandon its nuclear ambitions. The officials said the international community's stern and consistent message to Iran over its nuclear program was key to that deal's success. The ministers also vowed to continue pressing North Korea to improve its dire human rights record. South Korea's rival parties are at loggerheads over a probe into allegations the nation's spy agency used a sophisticated hacking program to snoop on citizens. Now, the main opposition party wants full disclosure, but the ruling party says some data needs to remain classified for the sake of national security and parliament should instead be focused on getting the economy back on track. Song Ji Son reports. South Korea's National Intelligence Service has agreed to disclose records on how it used a hacking program bought from a private firm based in Italy. The nation's two rival political parties have different opinions about what should happen next, considering claims the NIS could have used a program to tap smartphones in South Korea. In a statement released on Saturday, the ruling Senate party called on the main opposition party to stop pushing the spy agency to expose everything saying it was making the public nervous and could slow down business at the National Assembly. The ruling party urged the new political alliance for democracy to focus on passing the government's multi-billion dollar supplementary budget plan aimed at reviving the economy instead of hounding the NIS. It says the interference could affect the spy agency's ability to monitor North Korea, which is the reason the NIS gave for purchasing the hacking program in the first place. The main opposition party says the ruling party should stop shielding the intelligence agency, adding that the public has already lost trust in the NIS. A special parliamentary commission for the investigation, headed by An Cher Su, a former presidential candidate and founder of a well-known antivirus firm, has asked the NIS to submit all the raw data it has to the National Assembly. The head of the spy agency admitted this week that the NIS had purchased the program, but critics accused the agency of using it to illegally monitor the South Korean public. Officials say the two parties will discuss plans next week on launching a field investigation. They also plan to visit NIS headquarters before the end of the month. Song ji Sun, Arirang News. Now, the company is charged with salvaging the sunken Sewolho ferry from waters off Korea's southwestern coast, say so the vessel could be brought back to the service by next July. This is according to a timeline proposed by the Chinese firm Shanghai Salvage that has been selected by the Korean government to raise the ferry in conjunction with a local firm. The consortium will start talks with Korea's Oceans Ministry on Monday about the process of bringing the ferry to the surface, but salvage work is expected to begin in September. The aim is to have airbags inside the Sewol Ho by the end of the year and lifting it onto a floating deck by early next year. 295 people, including a great many high school students, died when the Sewol Ho ferry sank last April. The bodies of nine people still missing are presumed to be inside the vessel. Militants from the group that calls itself Islamic State have claimed responsibility for a suicide car bombing that has killed at least 100 people in the Iraqi town of Khan Bani Sad. Local police say the bomb exploded as people gathered in a market to celebrate the end of the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan. 
Children were among those killed. Witnesses say the force of the blast brought down several buildings in the predominantly Shiite town, some 20 kilometers north of Baghdad. Parts of the area around the town were captured by the Islamic State militant group last year, but have since been retaken by Iraqi forces and Kurdish fighters. Now, stunning new images and video have been released of Pluto's frozen planes. The latest pictures being backed by NASA's New Horizons spacecraft show a vast craterless plane that appears to be no more than 100 million years old. Now, what you're seeing right now is an amazing flyover of the same area showing the plane's dips and peaks in detail. NASA says the broken surface of irregularly shaped segments is populated by hills, troughs and streaks of dark material that could have been deposited by wind. Now scientists have so far received only about 2% of New Horizons flyby data, a figure that will increase over the coming months. However, we'll have to wait until October 2016 before all the data from the mission is beamed back to Earth. Now, mobile devices such as smartphones and laptops have made life much more convenient on a great many levels. But the biggest challenge is still keeping our batteries charged. But that might be about to get a lot easier, thanks to some work by local researchers that have taken wireless charging technology to the next level. Park Seung reports. It's common to see people carrying battery packs or searching for plugs for their chargers. Wireless chargers are an option, but they only work if the user is within 10 centimeters of the charger and the device is in certain fixed positions. However, a research team at KAIST has developed an omnidirectional wireless charging technology that works like a Wi-Fi zone. Their creation charges devices at a distance of 50 centimeters from the power source, regardless of the position of the device. What's more, it works in low-frequency magnetic fields that are not harmful to humans. The research team placed the chargers sending and receiving coils in a crisscross pattern to create rotating magnetic fields. This enables wireless charging in any direction with six degrees of freedom. The wireless charger that comes with the Samsung Galaxy S6 has only one degree of freedom, which means it can only charge the phone if it's in a fixed position. Just like a Wi-Fi zone, the charger can charge 30 smartphones or five laptops at once, with a maximum power transfer efficiency rate of 34 percent. The research team published their finding in the June issue of IEE Transactions on Power Electronics. They're currently working with a local technology firm housed at KAIST to commercialize the technology for use in cafes and offices. Park Seyang, Arirang News. Now, getting hurt is obviously never fun, and even the smallest cut or wound can later turn into a scar. However, some Korean researchers have come up with a new drug that uh, could help our skin heal ten times faster and even prevent scarring altogether. Uh, Won Jeon tells us more. This little one came to the hospital for a second-degree burn. Luckily, his burn wasn't bad enough for a surgical procedure. But if his wounds were more severe, the baby would have undergone surgery, which is not only time-consuming, but also has the potential of leaving a scar. Though there are some drugs available in the market for treating skin damage, scientists say these drugs only offer limited results. Since existing drugs mainly focus on pain relief, they aren't very effective in treating the wound itself. Even some of the newer drugs that stimulate cell growth have their limits, and they tend to be very expensive. To solve these issues, researchers from Yonsei University have developed a new drug that can accelerate the skin's healing process by 10 times and reduce chances of scarring as well. Humans naturally produce a number of proteins when the body tries to heal itself. And scientists found that one of these proteins, called CXXC finger protein 5, can actually interfere with the skin's healing process when it reaches a certain level. Thus, by blocking this protein, the skin can heal much faster. The new drug was first tested on animals and it showed dramatic results. And now, researchers have confirmed that the drug is safe for humans as well. After studying the structure of the skin of a patient with skin cancer, we have confirmed that the drug can be applied on people. Scientists also mentioned that the new drug is much cheaper to produce than existing drugs. They're now awaiting clinical trials with hopes to commercialize the drug within the next two years. Won Ji-hyun, 
Arirang News. And finally, taking a brief look at the weather, most of the country is under overcast skies this evening. It will be a relatively comfortable night with on and off light rain and the overnight low dipping to 20 degrees Celsius in Seoul. Sunday will be another cloudy day with highs in the mid-20s nationwide and the capital could see some drizzle in the afternoon. With that, let's take a look at the weather around the world. Well, that's all for now. Do enjoy the rest of your Saturday wherever you're watching us and stay tuned to Arirang TV. We'll be back with our next newscast at 10 p.m. Korea time. Till then, goodbye.